before we get into 4.2, I want you to take just a second and define these two limits. Let's do a little bit of a review, find out what they're equal to. This can kind of help us as we lead into the topic on, on 4.2. So pause the video, do that, and then I'll go through it with you. So on this first one, you should have plugged 5 in the top and the bottom. Try direct substitution is always the first thing. So try plugging 5 in the top and the bottom. Uh, 5 plus 2 is 7. Uh, 5 minus 3 is 2. There, it comes out. You know, there's no you don't have 0 in the denominator, so you're good. There's your limit. So the limit of the x approaches, approaches 5 is 7 halves. Okay, try this next one. If I plug 0 in, and on top I get 0 plus 0, I get 0. I plug in the bottom, I get 0 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3, but when I times them, I get 0 on the bottom also. So if you remember when that happens, that means there's normally, there's probably or good likely a hole in the graph. And so the way we check that is we see if we can reduce that. So let's take the top and factor it, see if there's something that simplifies. So it would be x times x plus 2 over x times x minus 3. Okay. If you look at that, the x's just cancel out. So we're going to say this. That limit is the same as the limit of, as x approaches 0 of x plus 2 over x minus 3. I just reduced that function. Okay, now plug 0 in. When I plug 0 in now on top, I get 2. On the bottom, I get negative 3. There's our answer. So a negative 2 thirds is what it comes out to. So that's just a quick review over limits. And we did really well to, on this on our test. Um, I was very impressed by we're, we're, I think we have those down. What we're going to go over today is another rule that can help us with limits. This is called L'Hopital's rule. It's not El Hospital rule, right? It's L'Hopital's rule. He was French. Uh, and what it says is this, right? If we cannot, if we get a zero over a zero like those examples we just did, sometimes uh, you cannot simplify it algebraically. And so we have another method of doing that. So, so if you try direct substitution and you get either 0 over 0 or positive and negative infinity over positive and negative infinity, when that happens, there's this rule called L'Hopital's rule that can help us simplify it. Okay, and what it says is this. It says, if I get my low and limit, both limits equal, the top and the bottom equal 0, or they go to positive and negative infinity, then I can take the derivative of the top, right? This is f of x and this is g of x. So either they both go to 0 or they both go to positive or negative infinity. If that happens, then I can actually take the derivative of the top and the bottom and take that limit, and it will be the same limit as the original one. Right? So to do L'Hopital's rule, the first thing is it has to be written as a fraction. The second thing is it has to either be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And if it is, you take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and that limit will be the same as the, as the limit of the original function. So if you look at this first, these are the two problems we just did. Look at this first problem. You've got to be careful. L'Hopital's rule doesn't even apply here, right? Because if I plug in 5, I get 7 over 2. So be careful not to apply L'Hopital's rule in cases where it doesn't apply. I did not get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Okay, if I try this next one, we know if we plug in 0, I do get 0 over 0. So I can try L'Hopital's rule. So to do that, I'm going to rewrite this problem like this as being the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 2x over, I'm just going to multiply that bottom part out, x squared minus 3x. Okay, now, because I got 0 over 0, I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and the limit, let me come down here, I'll say the limit, as x approaches 0 of, the derivative of the top would be 2x plus 2. Derivative of the bottom would be 2x minus 3. Okay, now plug 0 in. So I would get 2 times 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. Okay, that's the same thing I got when I took that same problem and simplified it algebraically. Right? I came up with that same answer. So we can see how L'Hopital's rule applies. Even when you can simplify it algebra algebraically, Sometimes you can use L'Hopital's rule. So a key thing is, L'Hopital's rule only works when it's 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. The way we apply L'Hopital's rule is you take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and then you just try direct substitution again to see if it works. So here's some examples. 
So if you look at number one, I have the limit as x approaches infinity of x over e to the x. So just think about the top. What happens to x as x goes to infinity? Well, I'll just keep getting bigger and bigger numbers, so it goes to infinity. What happens to e to the x as x goes to infinity? Same thing. If I plug in bigger and bigger numbers, I get bigger and bigger numbers back out. So let's put that. They both go. They both go to infinity. What that means is I can't find the limit as it is, but I can apply Wolpe-Tal's rule. Now, there's, you need to show, when you take the AP test, you have to show that the limit of x as x approaches infinity goes to infinity, and that e to the x does too. So to show that I can apply Wolpe-Tal's rule on your AP test, you have to show this. I have to say the limit as x approaches infinity of x goes to infinity, and the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x also goes to infinity. So I have to show that the top and the bottom, as x goes to infinity, they both go to infinity. So this part is required on the AP test, so we're going to practice doing that on our assignment here. Okay, but how we apply it, now that I've shown that, the way that I apply it is this, is because L'Hopital rule applies, I'm going to say the limit as x goes to infinity of, and I take the derivative of the top, which is 1, the derivative of the e to the x is e to the x, and now I just figure that out. Well, what is 1 over e to the x? Well, think about e to the x. This part, say, as x goes to infinity, this part gets bigger and bigger and bigger. 1 stays the same. That means getting closer to 0. So there's my answer right there. Okay, look at number 2. Now it's just flip-flopped. So, uh, you know, as x goes to infinity, the top goes to infinity and the bottom goes to infinity. And we'd want to show this part right here, right? That's how you'd write that, uh, you know, on the AP test. That's the proper way of writing that. They both go to infinity, the top and the bottom. Okay, so now I take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So I'd have the limit as x approaches infinity of derivative e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of x is 1. So really I end up with this, the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x. Well... If I plug in bigger and bigger numbers for, e, for x, I'm just going to keep getting bigger and bigger numbers back out. So the answer comes out to be infinity. Okay, and this way you have to be careful. Look at this last one. So the, those first two problems, I applied L'Hopital's rule. On this one, if I plug as x approaches 0, if I do direct substitution, I get a 0 on top, and I get a 1 on the bottom. L'Hopital's rule does not apply there. I don't need L'Hopital's rule. right? When I do direct substitution, I end up with 0 over 1. That's just 0. So just be careful. Sometimes we try applying L'Hopital's rule when it doesn't. It does not work unless it's 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Here's a couple more examples. So if you look at number 4, what's the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 minus 3e to the 3x all over x? The first thing you always do is try direct substitution. So let's try it. Let's plug 0 in first. On top I get 3 minus 3 times e to the 0 is 1. So I end up with 3 minus 3, I get a 0 on top. The bottom, I get a 0. Okay, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And the reason why, this is my justification. So this is what you put for the AP test. You'd say the limit as x approaches 0 of the top comes out to be 0. And the limit as x approaches 0 of the denominator of the bottom also comes out to be zero. So this is your, your justification that says, hey, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and do that. I get the limit as x approaches zero and take your derivative. The derivative of the top, derivative of three is zero minus three. Derivative of e to the three x would be three e to the three x. Derivative of the bottom is one. Okay, now plug in zero. So that would be, what, negative nine, times e to the 0, which is 1. So negative 9 times 1 over 1. So the answer is negative 9. That's what that works out to be. All right, number 5. This one says um, we want to find the limit as x approaches negative 1. It wants us to do this without L'Hopital's rule. So when I plug negative 1 in, I get negative 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I do direct substitution, I get 0 over 0. So we could use L'Hopital's rule. 
Um, but it says not to, so we're going to try it without it. So the way we do that without L'Hopital's rule is we try to simplify it algebraically. So take the top and factor it. That would be 2 times x squared minus 1, uh, x plus 1. Uh, I can take the top and factor it some more. That would be 2 times x minus 1, x plus 1, all over x plus 1. Cancel off the x plus 1s. Now to plug in negative 1s, so you'd have 2 times negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So, right, if I, if I can't use L'Hopital's rule, I'm just going to try algebraically to simplify it down. And then I'm just trying direct substitution again to see if it works, and it does. Okay, number 6 is the same problem. Let's use L'Hopital's rule on this one. Right, if, as I go to negative 1, this goes to 0, and this goes to 0. I'm not going to write the justification on this one just because I have lack of space here. But um, we know L'Hopital's rule applies. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 of, take the derivative of the top, so the 2 drops down, be 4x. Take the derivative of the bottom, derivative of x is 1, the 1 goes away. Now plug in negative 1, so you'd get uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 over 1 or negative 4. We get the same answer, same limit. Um, you'll have to decide which one's the easiest. I personally think this one's the easiest. So if I can, I always try using L'Hopital's rule. But again, the, the drawback is you just got to be careful with this. Don't use it when it doesn't apply. It has to either be infinity or, over infinity or negative 1 over negative 1. That's what it says right here, right? Uh, don't use it on these look-alike candidates, okay? Um, going back to here, number three back here, that's the one we used. This one, even though it looks like number one and two, when I go to zero, I do not get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So you got to be really careful to only use L'Hopital's rule when it actually has zero over zero. Direct substitution gives you zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Uh, let's do these uh, last couple of examples here. It says... If using L'Hopital's rule leaves you with a with the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can use the rule again. And you can repeat it as many times as you want. So here's an example. Um, as I go to negative infinity, if I plug in really big negative numbers and square them, this top part's going to go to infinity. On the bottom, I get when I plug in really big negative numbers, I end up with the e to the positive number. I end up with going to infinity also. So this is a candidate for L'Hopital's rule. Right, my justification would be this. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared goes to infinity. Same with the limit uh, as x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative x. There's my justification. Okay, so let's take the derivative of the top. It'd be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the derivative of the top is 2x. Of the bottom is a negative e to the negative x. All right, try direct substitution again. So when I plug it in the top, and I plug in really big negative numbers, this can go to negative infinity. When I plug it in the bottom, you're going to end up being e to some really big numbers, but there's the negative, so it goes to negative infinity also. Okay, well, that didn't resolve anything. Uh, but because it's infinity, negative infinity over negative infinity, I can take uh, the derivative again. So now I have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of derivative of the top would be 2. Or the bottom would be a, now a positive e to the negative x. When I plug in really big negative numbers, you have a negative negative, this will end up being really big positive numbers. So I have 2 divided by really big positive numbers. That means it's going to 0. So in that case, I took the derivative twice. I took the derivative the first time. I still have infinity over infinity, so I applied L'Hopital's rule again and got the second one. All right, this is kind of a fun one. So we'll get this one. I have the the limit as x approaches 1 of the ln of x minus x plus 1. So if I plug in 1, the ln of 1 is 0, uh, minus 1 plus 1. So I end up with a 0 on top. When I plug 1 in the bottom, I also end up with a 0. That means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And that's good because there's really no way to simplify that algebraically. So if I do L'Hopital's rule, I end up with the limit as x approaches 1 of the derivative of the top would be 1 over x, right, the ln of x, Minus 1, and derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, take the derivative at the bottom. That'd be 2x minus 2. Okay, plug 1 in again. If I plug 1 in the bottom, I get 1 over 1 minus 1. That's 1 minus 1. I get 0 on the top. Plug 1 in. 2 minus 2 is 0. So I have 0 over 0. I could apply L'Hopital's rule again. So let's try it again. So the limit as x approaches 1 of... Uh, I'm going to think of that... Really quick up here, I'm going to write this as being x to the negative 1. 
So when I take the derivative, the negative 1 drops down. Uh, the minus 1 goes away. On the bottom, I get 2x minus 2 derivative. 2x is 2. The minus 2 goes away. So now I have, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. Now I have the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 1 over 2x squared. Okay, plug in negative, plug in, uh, I said negative 1, sorry, 1 is what I'm plugging in. So I end up getting a negative 1 over, and if I plug 1 in the bottom, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, there's my limit right there. So in that case, again, I, I applied Wolpe-Tal's rule twice. So again, first time, the plug it, direct substitution. If it works, great. If not, if I get infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, apply Wolpe-Tal's rule. Take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and then try direct substitution again. Up with 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity again, just keep going. You can do that as many times as you need to until finally you don't get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So that's Wolpe-Tal's rule. It's just really just a way to work with limits, especially limits uh, that cannot be simplified algebraically. Uh, so just be careful on the assignment that, you know, they, they tell you on here, but not all the problems will require L'Hopital's rule. Okay, L'Hopital's rule does not apply to all the problems. So make sure you're, you're careful with that. Direct substitution first, and then if you can apply L'Hopital's rule, do it. If not, then, you know, use some of the other things that we've done before in the past. All right, let me know if you have questions, but that's, that's it for 4.2.